Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 84 where you send me your email questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. So let's get right to it. First one's called Wife of Conspiracy Theorist Focuses on Man's Kindness and it was sent to Dear Abby. And that's from Jason. He says, Mark, thought this was kind of interesting. And you can look that up if you want. Uh, it's Dear Abby from back on July 29th. Interesting, interesting. We are everywhere, that's for sure. This one's called Alan Alda Mentions Flat Earth. Mark, have you seen? And then there's a link to a, a, a thing where Alan Alda goes on The View and talks about Flat Earth. And yeah, I, I actually know quite a bit about that one. In fact, I knew Alan Alda was into it before it was even public because the guys from that giant YouTube channel, Shane, let me know that after they made their massive giant uh, YouTube video, even though it was only 20, 20 minutes long, I think it's up to 18 million hits, uh, Alan Alda watched it and actually called them and said that he was really interested in it. And then when he goes on The View, what's the first thing he talks about when, when they ask him, you know, what does he want to learn about next? He talks about Flat Earth, which is fantastic. I Honestly, if he's listening or if anybody knows how to get a hold of him, uh, he is absolutely invited to the meetup in Denver coming up next uh, in uh, this November. So look for him if you get a chance. This one's called The Five Questions. We're going to have a lot of those this episode. <clears throat> Uh, the five questions. Hey, Mark, could you play, e please email me your five questions list? Thanks, Steve Bastach. Uh, it's B-A-S-T-A-S-C-H. And yep, anybody wants the five science questions that I recorded and sent to Georgetown University, I'd be happy to send them. All you have to do is send me an email and say, five questions, I want them. And you don't even have to put anything in the body. Just put it in the title. I want your five questions. And I will send them, and I won't rattle them off here, but they are good enough science questions that it shut them down. And between Georgetown and the, the German television crew that wanted to do the debate, they said, nope, this debate is not going to happen. This one's called Admiral Byrd's Antarctic Snow Cruiser. Mark, nothing to see here, just a little $150,000 toy in $1930. Yeah, if you want to look that up, it's on theatlantic.com. It's a well-known thing. In fact, they never even really used it. It was just a giant, uh, it was like one of the early SUVs with giant balloon tires uh, meant to go over snow. And it just didn't have, it was too heavy, couldn't get the traction, and it was too big. It was just too long. So they turned it into kind of a, like a little mini camper. <laughs> they just parked it. They still used it, but it's awfully expensive for a little mobile home. This one's called 12 Slides. Hey, Mark, okay to read on air. Always important. If you guys don't want me to read it on air, make sure you put that in the beginning. Otherwise, I will probably read it. Uh, please send me the 12 so Slides FE introductory PowerPoint talk that was discussed with your most recent subject matter expert. I am sorry I forgot his name and his YouTube channel, which I would like to check out as well. Please include that in the email if you can. Thanks. Good luck in LA and Canada coming up. Can't wait to see the videos from both. Take care, Jack Frost. And yeah, the, the person that's been floating around is just Jack. Just like if you're looking around YouTube, just look for that guy. You can poke, poke around in forums and say, hey, has anyone seen just Jack? He was the AutoCAD technician that I had on my show, Strange World, and he's a great guy, and he's been getting really involved lately, and he was the one that came up with, he, sa he said, he claimed that he could convert people in 12 slides and that, that you could put on your phone. It's like, uh, so people were asking me, hey, can I get those 12 slides? Yep, you can. You can ask me for the 12 slides, and I will send them to you. This one's called NASA Spacesuit Drama. That's from Nick, and the episode, the the article is from the DailyBeast.com. It's called NASA spacesuit drama could delay our trip to the moon. Yep, yeah, yeah, because we're gonna go back to the moon, right? And they can't figure out the spacesuits now, even though they've had flawless spacesuits literally since the beginning. Never once has anybody died in a spacesuit because of a spacesuit problem, even though they should have. Five hundred supposed astronauts, somebody statistically should have died by now. Nope. 
nope, no problems ever. And the spacesuits of every version was perfect. Every version was wonderful. So why is why are they having problems with this one? They're not. They're, they're just stalling best they can, trying to kick the can down the road, which is amazing. And actually, considering how plugged in everybody is, not, not surprising that, that everyone's missed it up until now. This one's called <clears throat> Flat Earth on Calgary Radio. Uh, I Heart Radio, Calgary, what you doing at the courthouse? This conspiracy theorist ran a red light. Hey, Mark, I just heard this on the radio here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Word is getting out. Keep up the great work, Adrian Swain, uh, as I see the world on YouTube. Stay flat, bro. Uh, yeah, what was interesting was there. every once in a while you'll get news people that will have, they're looking for interesting things. Everybody's looking for something interesting to report on. And so sometimes they will send reporters outside of courthouses to get statements from people who just got out of court. Uh, because you can imagine some of them are quite heated or some of them are quite elated. But either way, lots of people want to tell their story when they walk out of court, unless their lawyer's with them and says, no, you know, no pictures, don't talk to anybody. And this guy actually got into Flat Earth. <laughs> so they put it on the, ra on, the, on the radio station and I replicated it. I think I called it, uh, you just type, type in Flat Earth Courthouse. And I'm pretty sure... Uh, it's, I can't remember. It was, at, well, about this time, about uh, the end of July when I posted it. It was, it was fairly clever. But yeah, remember, it was, it was just happenstance. They were recording people and they got somebody who turned out to be a flat earther who was coming out of court for a um, running a red light. This one's called PDF. Hey, Mark, Jim here used to live in Denver, Aurora and Westminster. Now in Sacramento, just down Interstate 5, about 850 miles. Will you send me the prepper's guide? Thanks. On Flat Earth, Jim. Uh, yeah, if anybody wants the prepper's guide, which I wrote, called Empty Shelves, inspired by the whole Katrina thing, where nobody prepped even after they were relocated and came back to New Orleans, you can send me an email to msergeant23 at comcast.net and just say, prepper guide. That's it. I mean, he even made it shorter PDF. I've got a few PDFs, but that's fine. He, he clarified that in the email. But if you just say prepper guide, I will send it to you. It's only two megs, about 100 pages. It's free. Uh, and who knows? You may be able to use it. I hope you don't have to use it, but you may. This one's called NASA New Space Suit. Yep, there's another person who sent me. Andrew. Mark, look at this. They must have seen your new space suit challenge. Daily Beast, spacesuit drama could delay our trip to the moon. And I, by the way, I appreciate everybody that sends me links because I can't catch everything. I do try to catch a lot of stuff. I am nailed to this machine most of the time. Uh, and if you're wondering what challenge they're talking about here and why people seem to be responding, <laughs> powers the beast seem to be responding to my videos. God help me. Um, it's I, I made Clue 13, uh, which was the lost nail which talks about I, I people were asking me different different interviews that i've done which was what will it take to get you to renounce flat earth and i said well initially it was like oh I, we're gonna need some camera footage right we're gonna need some uh, camera footage like a 4k camera that's attached to the side of a rocket and then <clears throat> well uh, it just occurred to me, like, maybe that's too much. I'm asking, I'm asking too much. Nobody's going to, it cost a lot of money and, and you'd have to do a lot of permission stuff and it's a design issue. And then it occurred to me, wait a minute, maybe, maybe there's something more simple that we can do down here. And then, uh, then it was the spacesuit, which is, and, and I challenge anybody, you, you want to go and mess with people's heads who say, oh yeah, the space program, it's absolutely real. It's like, all you have to do is ask them one question, one question only, which is why I did the clue? which is how does an astronaut suit work or how does a space suit work? Your, your choice. And, and they say, what do you mean? And it's like, well, how does it work? Don't, it's like, well, you mean, you mean like the oxygen? No, no, that's easy. Heating and cooling? Nope, that's easy too. We can do that. We've been able to do that forever. Tell me how a space suit, which is basically a thick balloon, works against a vacuum. How does it not act like a balloon because that's all it is. It's just a thick balloon. You say, oh, it's layers and layers. No, 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 no. A basketball has layers. A car tire has layers. But when you put air, air in it, it goes really, really tight. It goes taut like a snare drum. And, and, and whatever container, when you pump it up, it's whatever shape it's in, it'll go into that shape and it will not be movable. It'll be like a statue. And, you know, a basketball, even though it's only doesn't have a lot of air in it, you know, you can pump it up by hand. You know, you can't burst that thing. You can press on it as hard as you want, unless you're like a power lifter, somebody like that. 
Uh, but a car tire, you know, yeah, it has a lot more air in it, but it's it can hold thousands of pounds of pressure or of, of weight on top of it. So how does a spacesuit, when filled up with air, because that's what we're talking about here, because we're talking about high pressure, low pressure, how does it not act like a balloon? How is it so flexible? It is the one of the greatest, most clever cons of all time, which is, and, and look this up again, I, I not to go off on a little rant here, but I challenge anyone to look this up. The old NASA footage, when they were working in the old spacesuits, they knew that the soft suit wasn't going to work. They needed a hard shell, needed a hard shell. That's the it's how we do it with submarines. You know, a diver can only go so deep before the pressure gets to him. At that point, he has to get into a little diving bell, a little diving container, a, a hard shell. And so they're thinking, okay, we'll we'll treat like a like a semi hard shell with plastics and metals. Uh, you know, a suit that you can walk around with. And you know, even robotics technology now would you'd be hard pressed. You you just don't have the power to do it. And they they couldn't come up with it. And so the last minute. They just changed their mind and said, no, let's go with a soft suit. Let's go with a soft suit. No one's going to know the difference because the average person on the street doesn't know physics. We teach math. We teach uh, uh, geography. We, ta we teach social studies, stuff like that. We, we, we teach the basics, but we don't teach a lot about physics. Only the nerds know physics. Find the smartest nerd you know and ask him how a spacesuit works and watch him start scratching his head. That's, that's it. I mean, you can shut down anyone. God help me. If I ever run into an astronaut, finally, and, and that, because that is now going to be my number one question. How does the spacesuit work? And even if, again, and this all and my little rant on this, even if you could convince me in 2018 with all the microprocessor technology that there's something in the backpack of that magical backpack on the astronaut that can counteract the vacuum of space. And I can't think of the technology. Even if you could convince me in 2018 that it exists now, Tell me how it worked in 1969. Tell me how it worked. Because there was nothing digital back then. Tell me... Yeah, but even then, none of that matters because there is no technology. There, I can't even... That's how I know. It is one of the few things that I can absolutely say 100% without a doubt. Put it in a certificate you can frame sure that it doesn't work because I can't figure out the tech that you could even make up even if i was 50 years in the future even if i was 100 years in the future i can't think of the tech that could counteract a vacuum sorry it's my little rant sorry i i, I promise i won't do that again during this show okay this one's called request for a survival guide hi mark when you have a moment can you please send me a pdf file of your survival guide also would you mind if i share it with our facebook group under 100 friends go ahead i'm co-admin for Flat Earth Denver. Thank you in advance, and I'll see you in FEIC 2018 in Denver. Raleigh was great last year, so I'm happy Robbie is bringing the party to our neck of the woods this year. Yeah, I think Denver is going to be fantastic. Thanks, Sherry Mitchell. Thank you, Sherry, and looking forward to seeing you there. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, go to fe2018.com. You still got time. It's only the beginning of September, so you got uh, just under two months, and it's going to be a Denver to remember in November. This one's called technology. Mark, where can I get plans to build a free energy machine for my household? And can I contribute by confronting my UK leaders to enforce the law on disclosure about their own criminal activities armed with an opened Bible facing them and openly demanding they swear by almighty Jehovah that they swear not ever lie. There's no periods yet. One to another with their hands touching the printed text. It says, you shall not swear falsely by his name. And also empowering duet 10, du oh, Deuteronomy 10. Why would you abbreviate Deuteronomy? Uh, you shall swear by his name, Jehovah, very powerful indeed. Then it is impossible to speak untruth after that. I have done this many times. It always works every time. RSVP. So who do you suggest I see first? Wow. That's from Stanley. Stanley, I don't know where you're going with this. Who, who do you see first out of... I. And, and the plans for the free energy machine? I, I don't know if... It, he didn't actually mention me by name. I'm hoping he, he meant to send it to me. Every once in a while I'll get emails that are sent to other people like Rob Skeeber or Jaronism or Eric Tabay. All right. This one's called Round and Curvy on Vancouver Morning Radio. 
Sarge, I thought you would get a kick out of this. It was from a few months ago, but they actually liked the song and ended up making a great promo for the conference. Feel free to put in a video in your show. Stay flat, Jeremy Cummins, Parksville, BC. Yeah, look up the video. We, we Flat Earth is so different from any other conspiracy because it's so positive. It's so spiritual and it's so fun. It's, it's the most interesting story uh, ever. And because of that, there's songs. There's a lot of songs made about it. I've, I've got a playlist right now. I think it's got 260 something tracks and I'm, I'm just having a hard time even uh, adding them to it because there's so much content out there. But one of the best songs, one of the best productions out there is called Round and Curvy. So type in Flat Earth Round and Curvy. You'll see the video. It's, it's, it's totally worth the watch. I guarantee it. This one's called Question. Hi, Mark. You or someone else might have already answered this question. How is it that NASA can always locate capsules entering Earth, but so many planes have gone missing and have never been recovered? Maybe I just don't understand how each work, but I would assume that if you can find a capsule coming in from space, you should be able to find a commercial airplane. Thanks, Gabriella. Yep. Point well made. That's one of those head scratchers. No question. This one's called If... Hey, Mark, I got caught up watching your Flat Earth Clues, and I'm actually emailing you. My friends think I'm nuts, and if they know I was emailing you, well, it would be a tough crowd. Let's say I want to say I find your information uh, uh, very knowledgeable on the subject, and if by chance the FE thing rounds back out a career in Radio Brother in the most hetero way, I can say uh, you all, you're almost hypnotic. Uh, keep it up. <laughs> I don't, I, I, you're not the first guy to say that, hetero guy that say that I hypnotize people with my voice, which was weird. I've never, I've never been asked to do radio. Who knows? Maybe everything for a reason. Never once was asked to do radio. Never once was asked to do broadcasting or anything like that. The only people that ever commented on my voice were girlfriends who would keep me on the phone for a long time and never tell me why. It wasn't until years later. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do they like what I'm saying or are they just listening to my voice? I don't know. Uh, if you decide to make a run on Antarctica, I'm in. I don't trust folks who want to be in charge of me. That's how, that's, woo, that's a rough email. That go, if you can't run your own life, I'll be damned if you run mine as the, as you put it, authority. If you find yourself in an event you're hosting, I am, I'm like, skipping over words because there are so many grammatical problems here i own and operate a small ambulance service <laughs> it would be great to do donate the trucks in time you know i consider my brother to be extremely smart but he will not even hear me uh, it's lucky he lives in florida the arguments we've had i would have had to donate him an ambulance ride <laughs> Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Oh, and I'm not religious, but the so-called authority had better hope they hadn't they hadn't been hiding God or gods. That is a real game changer. Money is one thing and bad enough. I'm just saying. And f uh, for the money does not mean anything. Should have run that through spell checker and every other checker. But hey, we got through it, right? This one's called Flat Earth Question I Can't Figure Out. Mark, so I'm a believer and have been sharing my findings and such, but the one thing that stumped me one day was my friend telling me people have actually photographed and or seen the ISS through a telescope. Could you please help me in explaining this? Thanks, Mike. Oh, I'm not saying there's something, there, there's not, well, uh, double negative. There, there is something up there. No question. Uh, is that some, does that something have people in it? No, it does not. No way, no how. And that's because the production value of the interior shots of the ISS are trash. I'm not supposed to say crap anymore. Patricia is like giving me all sorts of grief over that. And she's like, no, she can't, you can't say that. It's like, all right, fine. I'm going to try to use trash and or garbage. Or if I was British, I suppose I could say rubbish, but I'm not really British. So yeah, the, the ISS is, is utter trash. The, the interior shots are trash. Now, is there something flying around? Sure. Uh, I challenge anyone, grab a pair of night vision binoculars and start looking up in the sky. There's tons of stuff flying around there. They are not satellites. Don't know what they are. Don't know who they are. Uh, they aren't us. That I know for sure. This one's called 12 Pictures. Mark, please send me the 12 pictures from your laptop that prove the flat earth. Thank you, David. It's not a laptop. It is a uh, Alienware Aurora R7. 
I have now switched from an R4 to an R7, finally. After a bunch of years, I loved my R4 so much. Uh, it's tower, and uh, but I will happy to send you the 12 pitchers. This one's called Picks, Please. Mark, hey, Mr. Been in touch before trying to get a screenshot and failing miserably. I know you can help me out. In your new intro, there's a few shots of Rob Skiba. Well, I love your guy's story, and I really, really want a shot of Rob on the stage uh, with the day Mark ruined my life behind him. So, yeah, I did send him that shot. Uh, just FYI, I love the fact that, yeah, Rob uses that uh, April 15th, 2015, I believe where the day Mark Sargent ruined my life. That's actually a slide, a uh, dedicated slide in Rob Skiba's presentation that I didn't even know was there until I got to Raleigh last year. It's like, thanks, man. Put put the blame on me. That's great. I mean, it's, it's true. We we did an interview back then, back in 2015, where I, I held my own and he was totally ready to shoot down Flat Earth. And by the end, he's like, you know what? I'm going to look into this more. And now it has become this wonderful magnet for him. Uh, let's see, just FYI, was with a lady that believed but was crazy otherwise, hooked up with an old flame in Mount Vernon that believes also. How lucky am I? <laughs> Thanks so much, Steve. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah, Mount, Mount Vernon, Washington, I believe, which means you're right up the road for me. My last district basketball tournament was in Mount Vernon. We were um, uh, the single A Northwest District. That's what's where it plays is up in Mount Vernon. A lot of, a lot of fun. A lot of great memories. This one's called 12 Pictures. Mark, can you send me those 12 pictures from the last guest? The last subject matter expert, please. And thank you from David. Yep. I, in fact, I, these next five, we're just going to rattle through them. I've got to give credit to the people. Uh, regarding 12 Flat Earth Pictures to convert everyone. Great, Mark. Thank you. Your reassurance on the clip art allows me to breathe a little bit easier. Thanks for the pics as well. I wish I were as good as you as at answering my emails. Uh, give your secretary, Joan, my regards. Ha, cheers, Suzanne. So, yeah. This one's called 12 Picks, and it's from Paul in the Plain. Mark, great show as always last night. Can I snag a copy of those 12 picks you mentioned? Paul. Paul on the Plane is on True Frequency Radio just before me on Tuesday nights. He has an hour-long show. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning me that, that my show follows you, and, and I've had a chance to meet with Paul several times. In fact, we did a meetup just recently up in Lake Stevens, Washington, just north of here. We did a, it was like a north-north Seattle meetup, very north. Okay, this one's called Slideshow Request. Mark, can I please get the 12-picture slideshow? Would like to share with people close to me. Hopefully get them on our side. Thanks. That's from Dan Daniel. Daniel. This one's called Guardian Interview Request. Hi, Mark. Thanks so much for your time today. It was such a great conversation. Uh, we will be going to Denver and we would like to speak and go visit personal, potentially Mad Mike, Bob, Rob Skiba, so on and so on. Let's keep in touch. Thanks again, uh, James from The Guardian. And I'm reading that just because, uh, that just to remind people that there will be media at the Denver conference. It's hard to say who's going to be there. Last year, as some of you know, I was interviewed a whole bunch of times, like 14 times in two days, which was a lot. I missed so many people's sets because I was I was doing interviews. But that's because there was a whole bunch of people there and big hitters, you know, BuzzFeed and BBC and ABC and French media and German television and a documentary team. And this year, the, the Guardian from the UK is sending over a, a team. I think they're sending over a four-man team. And they're going to be filming it same. They're going to do their own little documentary thing. And I imagine a lot of other documentaries, especially since the, the Behind the Curve film came out at the beginning of this year. And it's already in seven film festivals. There will be other, I, I've, I can already tell you there's uh, several others that are in the works. I think like three or four others that are that are currently in like pre-production. Uh, a couple from Canada, uh, one from London, and another one from the U.S. that they're trying to scramble, trying to, trying to get things going. Um, and they're going to have to be playing catch up because the behind the curve is already in seven as of this recording right here in seven film festivals. There They were in Toronto. Calgary, LA, Melbourne, Sydney, Madrid, 
and Bellingham, Washington, where I will be seeing it. It's going to, I think it has two showings up there and it's, that's kind of right up the road. It's a couple hours, but uh, they asked me to come up and, and speak at it. And so I'm, I'm going to go. It's uh, part of their film festival called Doctober. This one's called 12 Picks or Less. <laughs> yeah, send me the 12 picks. That's from Donna. Yep. And she actually has a, a AE map as her as her little footer, her little signature. Yep, sent that to her. Uh, this one's called... Uh, let's see, contact, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, that was another one from The Guardian. Wow, so many people. I, I gotta tell you, uh, Just Jack... There's a lot of people. This will kind of give you an idea of how many people were asking for this. Mark, send me the 12. This is in the, the title. Send the 12 proofs, the survival guide, the coast to coast interviews and whatever I'm forgetting. Thanks in advance, Clayton. And yeah, it's, I've, as you know, I've, there's several things you can ask for. If you want, you can ask for the 12 pictures to convince people. You can ask for the survival guide. You can ask for the paper that was between the, the guy, the um, uh, air traffic controller wrote uh, or you can ask for the coast to coast interviews because I cannot put the coast to coast interviews up on YouTube because I signed a release form saying I wouldn't. So they could actually go after me. But if you don't sign the release form, well, there's not much that you can do. This one's called 12 Pictures. Dear Mark, could you please send me the 12 Pictures demonstrating FE as you've mentioned in your show? Thanks. Yep. <clears throat> This one's also called, we're, we don't have too many more of these, but there are a few. This one's called 12 Pictures Survival Guide and the Coast to Coast Interview. Mark, please forward all these items and thanks. By the way, love the show. I called in Strange World 101 uh, YouTube channel, uh, Andrew John. Check it out if you haven't already. Thanks. And yeah, no, wow. Hard to believe that we're up to Strange World 163, 164. I think 164. And you remember, it's a weekly show, so 101 is at least 64 weeks back. Hard to believe. Time flies. This one's called Flat Astronauts. And it is loading. It is loading. And let's see. What do we got? Mark, I saw this today and thought about you. A little flat Earth humor, Flat Astronauts. Also, since you're a big fan of Elon Musk, I thought I'd show you this SpaceX mock-up. Lockheed's Orion MPCV and Boeing CST-100 Starliner photos as a bonus. Looking forward to your next video. Have a great week, John Jacoby. And yeah, they're cardboard cutouts of all the current NASA astronauts with their Air Force logos. Uh, and he's also standing in front of the Boeing Starliner. It's a mock-up capsule that does nothing. And then the, one of the Dragon, the Dragon capsules. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Oh, those are great. Great shots. Thank you for that, John. Good stuff. This one's called Flat Earth Slideshow for Smartphone. Hey, Mark, I am from Germany and like Flat Earth since 2016. Could you please send me these pictures for on my smartphone to convert people of Flat Earth? Looking forward to that. Many greetings. Sander. <laughs> Sander. I, didn't, I was not going to slip into a German accent on that one. I will slip into Russian from time to time, but not German. This one's called New 2018 Arizona Flat Earth License Plate. Hey, Mark, longtime listener, first time license plate. Uh, been a flat earth researcher since late 2015, and my story is pretty typical. The whole YouTube rabbit hole, incredulity, independent research, new view of the world, chestnut. Oh, I see what you did there, a little Austin Powers. That old chestnut. So I decided that when my registration came up for renewal this year, I would join everyone else in trying to put some truth out there for those still trapped in this matrix. I hope you still, I hope you like what I came up with. I don't think this one's been done yet. Hopefully it's worthy of inclusion in your monthly montages that I always look forward to. Stay flat, uh, Dalu. And um, hopefully he sent that. I think, I, yeah, I think I wrote him back and said uh you made a rookie mistake because you actually didn't send the plate and then he sent me another one that said that said oh yeah sorry so let's get it and if you do have a flat earth license plate and i don't I, and you haven't seen it in my compilations please send it to me just just email it to me uh, the same address msargent23 at comcast.net and i will put it in the compilation 
You know, you don't have to put your face in front of it or, or the car. You can just take a picture of the plate. Most people do, uh, but I'm happy to do it. I love I love the fact that we've got so many plates. We've got most of the, the continental United States and at least half the Canadian provinces. Uh, you don't have the, the North North provinces in Canada, uh, but that's mostly because I don't think they drive cars up there. I think it's mostly sled dogs. This one's called, Are You Still Answering Emails? Mark, just checking, we'll ask my questions and discuss things if you do answer. Thanks, John. You'd be surprised how many of those emails that I get just like that. It's like, are you still answering emails? Yes, I am. I'm going to answer them until uh, you'll know when I'm not because I will get so busy that I won't be able to, um, uh, I, I won't, I just won't be able to catch up and I'm having a hard time now, but I'm, I'm cranking through them as fast as I can. I'm filtering out a lot more. If they're really, really long, I just can't read them. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to try to, you know, fast food this as, as quickly as possible. This one's called congrats on the LA festival. Uh, that's from the producer, Caroline. She, she said, we're still pinching ourselves. I forgot to mention. Yeah. That they got into the LA the, behind the curve, got into the LA festival. And what's notable about that is that it's not a documentary festival. That's what's really, really cool about the LA Festival. So like in Toronto, it was the hot dogs. It was a documentary festival, nothing but documentaries. And there were 3,000 applicants. There was only 110 people that were accepted, 110 films. And we were one of them, which is great. Hey, fantastic. But this one was even better because there were only 10 slots available and we got in. And that's that's incredible. And they did not expect to get in, so and I, well, I really wish I could go down to that. If they invited me, I'd, I'd probably still go, but I was not invited. I know it, this is this is more for them. This is their their home court, and I'm I couldn't be happier for uh, Daniel and Caroline and Nick and and the other producers involved. This one's called Picks Request. Mark, I knew I could count on you. You rule, <laughs> Steve. Yep. This one's also called Twelve Slides. And is there anything in the body of the email? Can't tell, can't tell. Spinning, little arrows spinning. I love it when, by the way, the arrows spin and then it pops up with like, oh no, we do actually do have some words. Mark, hey brother, I'm, I am, I love your show. I'm a member of the Connecticut Militia mm. and a volunteer firefighter and I work a full-time job, uh, but I always eventually listen to every episode I can. One of your videos is what actually got me into our flat earth. Took about 30 seconds. That was about two years ago. I haven't really managed to convert anyone except for my wife. Her expression was priceless. She also got it right away. My son already suspected, so he was easy to talk to. Beyond that, it's harder than I thought. The reason for my email is regarding Jack's 12 picture slideshow. If you could send it to me, I would really appreciate it. We are also thinking of doing a meetup at some point. I'll let you know if we need some PR. Keep doing what you do and keep waking people up. Take care and stay safe. James. Yep. Thank you for James. James, and yeah, don't get discouraged. Everybody absorbs this at their own pace. You're, again, it's not your job to convince them, it's not your job to persuade them. It is only your job to put the seed in their head. Just throw the idea in their head. And it's that part is easy. Think of it like this. When you, when you go to somebody and you say, whatever you do, don't think about elephants. What do you think they're going to think about? That's all you just, and I know I stole that from uh, Inception, but it's true. It works. The idea, it's the idea that resonates. And, and uh, if it's an interesting one that they can't fully unravel, it's just going to sit there and spin like a marble in a paint can. You cannot shake it out. This one's called Answering Emails. Mark, Flat Earth Sitting on Pillars. Have you heard of this before? Check out this link. And it's from newatlas.com, quadrillion tons of diamond. Yeah. Uh, but one area doesn't behave like it would be expected to. Cratons are the oldest and most immovable slabs of rock and or rather in earth. Says who? Uh, with roots stretching down from the center of the tectonics plates to a depth of 200 miles. Again, who told you this? The deepest hole ever drilled is 8 miles. You tell me what's below 8 miles. Uh -huh. The assumed makeup of these pillars would produce faster sound waves, but not to the speeds that have been observed. Yeah. Sorry. Anything below eight miles, anything below physically drilling is, uh, is a theory. That's it. This one's called 12 pictures, please. Thank you, Alex. Yep. See, a lot of people want those pictures. 
It's amazing how, how well that subject matter expert, Just Jack, did. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, my name is Robert. I saw the two-hour video you posted on YouTube about Flat Earth. I've seen many videos about the subject. He's talking about the Flat Earth clues, by the way. And it has really made me think about where we are and what's outside the dome. One question I have is if you can answer. How would you explain meteor showers and shooting stars? I could never get my head around it, and no video I've seen can really explain it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, everybody explains it. Uh, it's, it's either part of the display system or they're just rocks being thrown into an aquarium. That's it. Again, it's not hard to do physically. It's not hard to do. Take a piece of metal or fire it in through some sort of railgun technology at a shallow angle and let the friction of the atmosphere just do its stuff and burn it up and try not to aim at any cities, which can be problematic. Uh, but we're, we're, our population centers are spread out pretty good. So unless you're asleep at the switch, I think that's a rail car term. Anyway, this one's called slideshow. Hi, Mark. Can you please send me the 12 pick slideshow from that AutoCAD guy? Thank you. Cheers, Stefan. Yep. I know Jack, if he's listening to this is probably thinking, Oh man, there's a lot of people that asked for those 12 slides. Yes, indeed. This one's called 12 picture slideshow. Good morning, Mark. Just wondering if you could send me the 12 meme pictures from your subject matter expert. Thanks, Rob Matheson. Yep. Sent that to him. This one's called slideshow. Hi, Mark. Long time. No email. There's just so much crap going on these days. You know, I'm not supposed to say crap anymore, which is an anagram for what? I'll work on that. Too many articles to send. I don't even read them anymore. Besides, your audience is so large now, there is no way I can be first to send anything. I'm still loving the show. When you first started, I always look forward to the SMEs. But over time, I realized I also want to know what your habitual callers are up to. I've emailed and chatted with Mark from New York. Start spreading the news. He actually put little musical notes next to that. That's pretty cool. I am looking forward and excited to hear he's going to try to get a show going with those other two. <laughs> Yep, then he did with uh, Brian and Shauna. I'm telling you, an hour t or an hour and a half will not be long enough. Just Jack has potential to go far in the flat community with his unique take on the subject and the scriptures. Yes, he does. He's been very active. I, I like what he's doing. Have a good one. Keep it flat. And as Mark from New York would say, shout out to everybody. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? P.S. Respectfully requesting the slideshow from Just Jack. What a catchphrase. Thanks, Bill Duke. Awesome. This one's called what? Flat Earth and my personal journey. Mark, at the beginning of this year, I resubscribed to Coast to Coast AM and happened to listen to your 2017 interview. Uh, actually, it was 2015, but if they reproduced, oh, oh, the 2017 interview. Um, yeah, the other one I did, not with George Norrie. I became intrigued with the Flat Earth model and subscribed to YouTube Red. And so my journey took me to the place in which I consider myself a Flat Earther. Many videos and internet searches later, I am at the place where I am close to finishing a book on the Flat Earth. I've always, already have my ticket for the Flat Earth International Conference in Denver this fall. Plus, I have my hotel reservation and plane tickets are paid for. I plan to publish my book on Amazon since they offer a great publishing package for writers. I should be ready to publish my book by the beginning of September. I have also set up a website, flatearthfordummies101.com. However, the website will not be expanded until I have submitted my manuscript to Amazon. Thank you for guiding me to Flat Earth. I can't wait for the conference. I paid for tickets up front close to the speakers. I should have copies of my book before the convention. If I do, I'm hoping I can offer my book for sale at that time. Of course, it's all depending on how fast I'm able to finish the manuscript. Oh, I meant to tell you I'm in Fort Lauderdale area of South Florida. All the best, Elaine Clanton. Thank you, Elaine. That's great. Always love to hear people's journeys. This one's called what? It's called Russian scientists disclose we live on a flat earth under the firmament. Hey, Mark, get a load of this from Vincent Rhodes. Proof of the firmament? And that's what the, vid the video is called. Russian scientists disclose we live on a flat earth. So check that out. That's from Eric. This one's called Flat Earth Google Maps. Hi, Mark. Love listening to your YouTube videos, and I'm writing in relation to AutoCAD Technician. All my projects are on a flat earth, Strange World 158. You mentioned the Google Maps photos being taken from airplanes to produce what we find on Google Maps. I am not sure if this applies everywhere. If Google Maps 
in Google Maps, but I assume it does, uh, when you zoom in as far as possible, it's easy to see that these are no photos from anywhere. It is artwork and poorly done, mostly in my opinion. Once I saw this, I've never been able to trust Google Maps whatsoever. It's totally fake like the rest of our world. I'm sending this email as I'm not sure if you get to read the comments under the videos. Keep up the fantastic work, bro. I love your work, Judy from Australia. Thank you, Judy. And uh, thank you for the insight. That's awesome. This one's called, all your videos are awesome and I had a favor to ask. Okay. Hi, Mark. My name is Sean and I'm pretty sure it was your Flat Earth Clues videos that red-pilled me in 2015. I wanted to thank you for opening my eyes and mind. Also, I heard you say on a video the other night that you have 12 pictures in a zip file to prove Flat Earth. Could you please send it to me? I would really appreciate it. No hurry. Just when you get a chance, that would be awesome. Keep up the good work. I'm sure that I am not the first person to tell you that. And that's from Sean in Santa Cruz, California. And yes, I did write him back. Good. This one's called Hot Survival Guide and Photos. Good day, Mark. I would love to have your survival guide, as well as those 12 pictures the guy in your show used to show people how the earth is flat. Very respectfully, Lorenzo Barnes. I have got this funny feeling that because I've mentioned this 12, these 12 pictures so much during this email thing that I'm going to get a lot more emails. It's, it's going to get cyclical, isn't it? People are going to like email me and say, hey, can I get those 12 pictures? I didn't catch that the first time. Which is fine. We can do that. I mean, I've got them. It's no, no worries. This one's called Survival Guide. Hello, Mark. I'm Lesia. Lesia. That's an interesting name. L-E-S-I-A. Lesia White. I was speaking with some people on Poncho Pete's Hangout, and they said that you had produced a survival guide. I just live off the coast of Louisiana in Lake Charles, and although they put out hurricane preparedness tips in a list, I'm always looking for ways to keep myself safe in any circumstances. Would be willing to purchase a copy through whatever means that are most convenient to you. Just let me know. Thank you in advance. Keep it flat. Alicia, yes, send $1,000 to the address listed in the description box. No, the survival guide is completely free. And why, why wouldn't it be free? It's, it's meant to try to keep people alive. I'm not going to charge it for that. That'd be silly. It'd be hypocritical, I think. Plus, it was kind of fun to write because I got to lash out at Americans because it's really more of an American survival guide. Than anything. I mean, it'd be, it'd be applicable in most industrialized nations like Europe, uh, all of Europe and, and UK and um, maybe parts of Australia, but there's other places in the world which probably wouldn't be great. That manual wouldn't be great for. Uh, this one's called 12 Picture Zip File, please. Hey, Mark, currently listening to Strange World 159. Uh, I think it was 158, wasn't it? And heard mention of the 12 image zip file. Could you please send it to me? Thanks for all you do. That's from Josh G. Yep. This one's called YouTube Features. Hi, Mark. Do you know how to blur out someone's face on a YouTube video? <laughs> I don't get that many technical requests for YouTube video stuff, and I've never had to blur it. Look, I, I really go with the basic, basic stuff when it comes to YouTube because I'm making a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, my channel now, I think I've passed the 1,300 video mark. That's a lot in three years. Uh, by anybody's standards. That's a lot of videos. And I mean, granted, there's quite a few short ones in there, but some of them are. I mean, this one's an hour long. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, I don't. I, do, I don't know how to. That's from Maryland. I, I don't know how to do this or blur somebody's face out on YouTube. But you know what? I bet you there's a YouTube video on that. <laughs> seriously, you could actually just type that in. But guys, seriously, I, I've, I'm... Uh, I used to do internet research for a living, and you'd be amazed if you just asked the question into Google or YouTube. Just Google it. Just literally type in the question that you have into Google, no matter what it is. It's not like the old days where it, where it just pulls up something random. It, there's now information available for everything, whether it's uh, baking uh, a chocolate cheesecake or changing out a carburetor on a 57 Chevy Camaro. They're all out there everything is out there now you you if you can imagine a heck they got what what box opening uh, channels that are just dedicated to opening up boxes of things so when you order you don't get that anxiety when you when you get something in the mail what it's going to look like when you open it up you can actually go through the entire uh, open box process of anything from tvs to blenders uh, this one's called This Kills the Moon Landings. Mark, this is an interesting medical fact that NASA could not avoid and proves medically that no one has ever went or walked on the moon. Let me know what you think. And if I'm wrong about this, feel free to text me at. I would like to call, but I don't have you saved in my phone. I'm probably not going to answer. <laughs> That's from Ben. 
And uh, I wonder if I clicked on this. Let me, uh, it's only a mag. Let me see what happens when it loads up. Is it a picture? Picture? I'm supposed to enunciate more. Caroline keeps telling me that. You gotta enunciate picture. Could you say picture? Like there's no C in it. And some medical documents that how to prove we've never been in space. Uh, underwater, how to prove you've never in space. Uh, atmosphere, why 100% oxygen is deadly at any atmosphere. I don't think they say they, they do 100% oxygen though. Deadly at any atmosphere. Yeah, okay. I, I know I get the, the I get what he's saying here that 100% oxygen. Yeah, of course it's deadly. 100% oxygen is actually a fuel more than anything. We, we only breathe about 20% oxygen right now. And when you see athletes on the sidelines of uh, football games, American football games, they're, they're breathing uh, a higher concentration of oxygen. It's more than 20%. Uh, but when you get to 100%, it's, it's perfectly flammable. It's, I mean, it's an oxidizer. It's, it's, you can, you, you light a match in a hundred percent oxygen environment and that you, it'll be a firestorm immediately. All right. So let's get out of that. This one's called survival guide and coast to coast interview, but the way he spelled it, I, I gotta, I gotta call this one out. The title is S E R V I V L E survival guide and cost to cost interview. Hi, Mark. Please send me both of those, please. Love you. Love your work. Keep pushing. That's from Anthony. And I did. So, hey, you know what? He tried. It's like watching somebody jogging on the side of the road and they're just struggling. At least they're jogging. I will give them credit for the effort. Uh, this one's called five questions and 12 slides. Hi, Mark. I sent you five. I sent your five questions out to a few scientist friends of mine and have yet to receive any response, even though at least one physicist said they were trying to answer. Saw your August 1st video with Patricia Steer, where you mentioned 12 slides presentation from DITRH. Uh, no, it's, it's not DITRH. It's um, uh, just Jack. It was from a Strange World episode. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'd like to share them. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Has someone put these together in a short video? Uh, not yet. It seems that short, but the, a lot of them are very similar to the DITRH slides, which I use in all the Strange World episodes. Uh, so DITRH did some uh, some fantastic slides, and I try to share them whenever I can. It seems that short videos can be the most convincing way of getting people's attention and change minds. Good examples include the uh, hashtag walkaway movement videos. By the way, I'm still angry that they got rid of pound because remember back in the day, and I know my dad used to work for the phone company back in the day, but we all know it was asterisk and pound sign, right? Those are those two things down there, asterisks on the phones, asterisk and pound sign. And for whatever reason, they changed it. When we got into social media, it went from pound to hashtag. I mean, I think pound would be really cool. I mean, it's one syllable. It's catchy. It's a pound, um, but whatever. Um, Movement videos and Q plan to save the world, which have been going viral. By the way, do you, th what do you think about this Q plan to save the world video? Uh, someone should also come up with the flat earth version of the hashtag walk away video. Thanks again for all your work. Look forward to the 12 slides. And that's from Robert. And uh, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything bad about the, the, the Q video. I mean, there it's a conspiracy like anything else. But let's face it, I, you know, I'm not trying to be callous here, but sex trafficking has been around. It's horrible. It's awful. It's terrible. I, I, I don't endorse it in any way, shape, or form, but it's been around for millennia. Sex trafficking has been around for a long, long time because of the physical disparity between, the, uh, between, between male and females. The, of, of our species, period. A guy, when he hits puberty, all of a sudden he can take out a, a, a woman of any age. And because of that, and men abuse power, power corrupts. And it's like, hey, let's let's abuse women. Let's put them into slavery and and, and sell them as, as a commodity whenever we can until civilization becomes refined enough to where most industrialized nations, it's, it, you know, Ugh, I don't want to get into it. Anyway, the point is that sex trafficking is 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 horrible, it's awful, it's as awful as anything, and but it's also below flat earth. Sorry, flat earth is bigger. Plain and simple. So uh, it's what I do 24-7, flat earth all the time. It is it is flat earth is literally the whole world. Uh 
uh, everything that's else is inside it. It's underneath it. It's second tier. It's third tier. Not to say that it's not significant, but it is beneath flat earth, literally. There you go. This one's called Joe Rogan and the Moon Landing. Hi, Mark. Hope you're doing well listening to you regarding Joe Rogan. The fact that he used to be against the moon landing, then hearing from you supposedly that he totally changed his mind and believes that the moon landing did happen. The reason I bring this up is because I saw a podcast of him dated February 8th, 2018, and I'm including the YouTube link if you would like to view it in case you already haven't done so. From what I can tell, he's going back and forth on the subject, and even though he's being cautious about not saying that the moon landing did not happen, he is admitting that the footage... Uh, or part of it is faked. What do you make of this? Always a pleasure listening to your YouTube videos. Keep it flat. That's from Costas. And yeah, Joe Rogan seems to be wavering a little bit. I just don't know if the leverage that was used on him to flip his opinion some years ago has softened as of late, or they're just allowing it, or he's getting more bold, or he's just getting older. I don't know. He, he's the same age as I am, So, but he's got a family. So maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what, or maybe he's doing the whole bandwagon thing. All I know is they never called me. They tried to set up a debate between uh, Eric DeBay and Neil deGrasse Tyson. That wasn't going to happen. Neil Neil was never going to do that debate, but they have never called me. And and if they did, it'd be an interesting conversation. I will say that. I, I don't know if I would actually make it down to the studio if, if he actually called me because there's some questions. We, there's some things we'd have to hash out, and I, I just don't know if they're ready for that, but whatever. This one's called 12 Pictures for Flat Earth Explanation. You know, we're going to continue this into the next, you know, because we, we're still, we're just finishing up July now. Uh, 12 Pictures for Flat Earth Explanation. Hi, Mark. I'm fairly new to the Flat Earth movement and started my journey through the biblical cosmology angle. And then one will eventually get to the NASA deceptions and lies. So I am still learning a lot. Can you please send me the 12 pictures explaining Flat Earth? You mentioned on your YouTube post at the one minute time frame and on 73118, August 3118. Uh, thank you, Werner. Huh. Actually, no, other than Werner von Braun, I've never known another guy named Werner. That's cool. We still have time for a few more. This one's called 12 Slides to Convince Anyone. Mark, please send me the 12 slides that will convince anyone to believe in Flat Earth. That was a great interview, and I'd like to present the 12 slides at our next Flat Earth meetup in Jacksonville. Thanks, MW. Very welcome. I got a lot of requests this time around. This one's called Survival Guide from DJ Flat Earth, a.k.a. No Globe. What's going on, Mark? I would like a survival guide and also a moment to bug you for a minute and tell you a little about myself. I am 26, married with two kids in Johnson City, Tennessee. I've been traveling, a traveling DJ for the past three years and even had my own radio show on WMCT. I currently make a guitar string graveyard shift and part-time master of ceremony, wow, ceremonies for star weddings and entertainment. A lot of people my age do not trust the government and know the moon landing as a joke and laugh every time it or the ISS is used as a reference for, to mankind's accomplishments. I'm trying to spread the truth by having uh, by having such a name and seeing people's faces when they see DJ Flat Earth is a what today's society would call normal type of guy. I figure why not if these young rappers can walk around with a hashtag Team Satan hats why not rep the flat earth openly? Yeah, you got a point there. With all this said, if there is any event, including your awesome show or flat earth conference that needs a DJ or random guest co-host, please hit me up. Any way I can contribute to help spread the truth. I won't bug you anymore, but if you would like to hear about my interesting experiences I've had telling my wife and family and coworkers about flat earth, just let me know. I think you'll find what I have to say about Instagram pretty interesting. P.S. Sorry for the crappy punctuation. Keep it flat, brother. With three A's, your pal DJ Flat Earth, aka No Globe. And you know what? I'm gonna write him back and say, "Tell me about your stories, man. I'd like to hear them." Okay, we still got time for at least two more. Prep guide, please. This one's called Prep Guide, please. Hi, Mark. Love your work. I was at a video link up that you and Dave Murphy did with FE New Zealand last year. Awesome. I remember doing that one. That was great. That was like the New Zealand conference. It was in a bar, and people were just huge mugs of beer that's that's what it was about it was it was great thank you for 
that why oh why did I not hear you say don't tell your family <laughs> that you're now a flat earther about three years ago I have two kids my son is 33 my daughter is 30 so it's safe for those who have recently told me on Facebook not to breed <laughs> I told my son shortly after becoming flat and this year he told me that I am a cooked old man. Uh, apparently cooked means mad in New Zealand. And I could not see and indoctrinate my two grandkids aged 18 months and four years. I have never sat my grandkids down and tried to indoctrinate them. I've not seen them since February of last year. Funny what the subject does to family and friends. Can you put in a good word for me with Patricia as I would love her to take me out on a date oh thank you john bailey yeah i know patricia is uh she is wonderful i i could do worse when it comes to co-hosts that's for sure uh this one's called flat earth advice hey thanks we gotta find an ending one now hey thanks for sending me this i can't get it to open also watch the globe the globe the lab coat and the nasa videos those are amazing i'm trying to figure out a way to discuss them without shutting me off uh there are some lawyers and nasa guys so it'll be a challenge <laughs> don't know what all that means uh but it, it, but he's also mentioning the other clue which was flat earth clues 14 the code of credibility if you haven't watched that check it out flat earth clues 14 it's a lot of fun it talks about how basically if you buy a 15 dollar lab coat you can go on the street with, with a clipboard and if you have another person filming you People will stop dead in their tracks and, and answer anything you, you want to know because you're wearing a freaking lab coat. Okay. Um, maybe this is, is this be the end one? We'll see. Uh, this one's called Hi, Mark and Nathan. Uh, plane flight from LAX to the Bay Area. Sun unsetting videos. Um, you, you don't know me, but I'm a fellow truther that recently got turned on to the flat earth theory and I've been looking into it all. I'm thoroughly convinced. And since I was going to fly to see family in Ohio from California, I took the opportunity to take some videos. I left at 8 PM. The sun was setting. So I decided to take videos one minute or less so I can text them to friends as we got climbed in elevation the sun that was already set when on the ground unset as we got up in the air for a few minutes this is impossible on the heliocentric model if we were spinning especially since my layover was directly north so globe heads can't say that we were following the sun around the globe to debunk this i figured you could uh, make good use of the videos since i know nothing about the video editing and don't make youtube videos feel free to call or text me thanks guys you're doing great work i sent a google drive link uh, to the few short videos uh, to you guys uh, and one other person. Cheers, Kevin. And should we? Um, you know what? Let's 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 end this. We'll end on this one. This one. I like the title of this one. It's called "Fe Causes Denial and Anger." Hey, Mark, love your work and zeal. I make a video about once a week on YouTube. I use my phone to do everything on my channel. My last video was the first time I spoke about what I do and kind of my background just a little bit. And boy, oh boy, did the trolls come at me hard, trying to put me down and discredit what I was saying. I support Flat Earth 100%. That's why they jumped on discrediting my channel. I'm being completely honest with what I was saying, and I think it struck some nerves. This troll wrote a three-page put-down saying I wasn't an architect, nor did I have a musical background, and went on, went on to go as far to say I lived in a cr crappy apartment. Just saying, man, they hate someone that might know even a little bit about what they're talking about promoting Flat Earth. If you get a chance, please watch Get Baked with Brother Jake. Let the truth settle in your mind and bake the title of the video uh, is maybe I'm just an idiot for believing Flat Earth. I did a year in college business tech and computer science, and I've been building homes and additions for more than 20 years. I actually started into building when I was 12 uh, by force by my stepfather who hated me. However, that's another sad story. Just saying, uh, I've built more homes and designed more than I can think of. I'm not some huge, big architect. I'm a small-time, old-school, pencil-and-paper-style designer. I'm talking hardcore math and geometry that the state has to pass in order to build. That's why I don't have a college degree, because I'm not computer savvy. But I am legit, Mark, and the earth is totally flat. Get baked! Your friend, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. That's a kind of a fun one. We'll end on that. 
So uh, thank you to everybody that emailed me so far and everybody's going to email me in the future. The address is M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at Comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.